Welcome back to the show once again. Always great to see our next guest. She has some amazing information uh, and of course, breast cancer research and prevention, a constantly updated science mm -hmm. and research uh, arm as well. So we'll talk about that today. Lorna Vanderheg is joining us now, author and women's health expert. How are you, Lorna? Hi, Lorna. I'm very well. So what nice are we talking you. about today? Well, we're going to talk about breast cancer prevention. You know, back in 1960, one in 20 women developed breast cancer. Today, it's one in nine. Wow. So although we're raising millions of dollars for breast cancer research, the average woman has no idea what she can do to prevent breast cancer. Yeah. Most women don't even think they can prevent well, breast I'm cancer. And most women, is the first time they get a mammogram is, there, is when they first find a problem. But right. there's things you can do to prevent getting yourself in that situation. What are some of the things that you can do diet-wise just to make yourself more healthy? Well, the diet things are easy. Lots of cruciferous vegetables. So that's broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, cabbage, and kale. We have a lovely cruciferous uh, medley up here. We do. Bro um, also, broccoli sprouts, which are loaded with sulforaphane, which has great research for breast cancer prevention. If you hate cruciferous vegetables, we have nutritional supplements in the health food store that are made up of all the ingredients found in cruciferous vegetables. And you know, the reason why the Canadian Cancer Society tells you to eat broccoli is because it contains indole-3-carbinol. What they don't tell you is you'd have to eat seven pounds of broccoli <laughs> seven a week pounds. to get enough <laughs> indole-3. I like broccoli, broccoli but not yeah. that much. Uh, yeah. All these things, do they have the same sort of elements to them yes. that, that help mm. with prevention? They include things like indole-3-carbinol, uh, DIM, which is another nutrient, and sulforaphane. And those are the three um, real powerful anti-cancer for hormone-related cancers. So breast cancer, prostate cancers, um, uterine cancers, cervical yeah. cancer, that kind of thing. You know, thing. it's interesting that we're, we're talking about prevention versus because we spend so much time talking about diagnosis uh, right. and not a ton of time talking about lifestyle changes you can make so you're never in that situation. That's true. Um, we talk about getting mammograms, you know, having your annual mammogram, but you know, what we don't talk about with mammograms is the fact that they miss a lot of cancers and they detect sometimes cancers that aren't there, so excess yeah. treatments. I really think that women need to understand what they can do to prevent mm -hmm. breast cancer. Things like staying thin. That's probably one of the best things you can do. Breastfeeding. When you have a baby, breastfeed your baby for as long as you possibly can. Because that is nature's greatest breast cancer protector. Uh, things and when you're talking like, about staying thin, you're not talking about staying skinny, you're talking no. about staying healthy. Yeah. So yeah. What, are, what are some of the things that you can do? Is it just daily exercise? Well, well, even just 10 minutes of exercise a day, just 10 minutes will reduce your risk of cancers. Yeah. So That's it's walking, simple. That's you know, just like walking. You know, park your car further away, take the stairs. So no, you don't want to be, you know, super, super thin, but you want to be in good shape and you want to understand that as soon as you start gaining weight and it's fat, those fat cells produce tons of excess estrogen. And, you know, we have very high rates of estrogen receptor positive breast cancers. I think that has a lot to do with the fact that our society consumes so much soy. Yeah. And there was something about soy that I learned a few years ago, and I took it, but I don't drink milk at all, and I drank soy instead, but I thought I was doing something good, but I've changed to almond milk since then because um, what is with soy milk and right. estrogen, and why is it bad for you? Well, they finally did a study where they had women drink one eight ounce glass of soy milk and they found that their estradiol, which is not a good estrogen, it's a very powerful estrogen, was raised 380% by wow. one eight ounce glass of soy milk. So wow. I never recommend soy. I've never been a proponent of soy, not for the last decade. And uh, I think women should avoid it. I think men should avoid it as well. And we definitely shouldn't be feeding it to our children. Yeah. Uh, the Cancer Society sent out a warning about milk thistle a couple of years ago, too, letting women know that and they... And we see this in health food stores, yeah. so you automatically it? think it's going to be good for you. But right. what, initially, before we talk about why it's, it's not good, why do people take milk thistle? Well, milk thistle would be a herb you take for liver support and liver cleansing. Um, but a lot of our nutrients haven't been researched in regards to what they do to your hormones. So they right. did a study and they found that it elevated prolactin levels, which caused breast swelling and breast pain. And then the Cancer Society felt that the rat studies were, you know, problematic enough about proliferation of abnormal cells that women shouldn't take it. And I tend to agree with them. You know, it's, a, it's amazing because we're inundated with information all the time and, and you walk into stores and you have these assumptions, but 
I guess if people are going to make a lifestyle choice, they should really at least do the bare bones research, right? I mean, they you should, should read. be thinking about this. They should read. You know, the reason why I write books, and a lot of my books are on the website at hormonehelp.com for free. Yeah. Um, they should read books and they should make sure there's references and that there's research behind it. And, you know, companies that make nutritional supplements, they should be providing you evidence and good companies will put that evidence on their websites. They'll have the research studies for you to read and they'll be well, prominent. I guess the problem is with most people, you know, they go into a health food store and they don't just see milk thistle. We see aisle upon aisle yeah. of all these supplements. It's a health food store. And it's natural store. and it's supposed to be good for you, but right. people don't look into why one would take them in the first place. So where can, can you go to someone like yourself, just the books? Right. Check right. it out. People can um, look things up. PubMed, which is the public medical library, you can type in the name of a, of a herb or a product. We have to remember, you know, we've never had a death from a natural product in Canada ever. Yeah. They're very, very safe. And for milk thistle, you know, I would take it if I was doing a liver cleanse. I just wouldn't take it every day. Yeah, it's just not daily. You know, that's what yeah, happens. Yeah, it's the daily use that's the concern. And when we look at nutritional supplements, you know, look for the ones that have clinical science. Like I had a grandmother who died of estrogen receptor positive breast cancer. She waited till the tumor grew out of her breast before she went to the doctor, which is very oh, common. Yeah. And um, unfortunately, so as a result, she didn't survive it. And so I started looking at what we could do to prevent breast cancer and there was so much research 800 studies on indole 3 carbonyl alone so things like indole 3 carbonyl dim deglucurate sulforaphane all of these nutrients if you took them every day they've even got research for reversing abnormal pap wow. smears as well and mm. you created uh, estrosmart is, right. is sort of your answer and your reaction in, in right. some ways to what happened uh, with your grandmother and your well I was looking at things that were going to help me I have one daughter who'd already had multiple breast cysts and breast lumps and fibrocystic breasts so we put her on it um, I have two two daughters that are taking it myself and everyone I love is on it as well and I'm on a personal mission to get every <laughs> woman on it to prevent breast cancer you know let's do what we can to reverse the risk alcohol consumption is another bad one because uh, the and reason coffee too unfortunately and coffee. yeah so women need to limit their consumption of caffeine uh, maybe one or two cups a day tops. If oh, well, that's three, reasonable. Four, five, I can handle that. I, I can handle, handle that. that. That's handleable. And, uh, I thought you were talking about elimination. And, you know, ca uh, alcohol consumption, you know, one glass of, of wine a day. But if you're drinking a bottle, then you're yeah. in trouble. Well, you've Probably. got a whole other rash of things that you yeah. should be concerned about. Well, thank you so much, Lorna. Well. Of course, Thanks, early Lorna. detection. Go see your doctor if you have any concerns about your health. Of course, you can go to Lorna's website to find out any information about what we were talking about today. Yep. Hormonehelp.com. We're going to take a break when we come back.